boss battles. Aren't they great? You know, except for the ones that aren't and totally suck. Greetings and welcome ladies and gents, I'm the Super Gamer, and boss battles are a pretty important part of video games. They're not in every game, granted, but when they are there, their job is to put the skills you've learned to the test as well as provide a memorable gaming moment. But these boss battles are complete crap. As per usual, only games that I've played and only one game per franchise. Also, please keep in mind that this is my opinion and therefore not yours. So don't get your knickers in a bunch if you don't like my picks, okay? Okay. With that said, this is my top 5 worst boss battles. To start this list off, I thought it'd be appropriate to put the final boss of Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. Yeah, I know this is an obvious pick for a list like this, but it really deserves to be on here. After finishing some of the most challenging stages in Crash Bandicoot history, we finally come face to face with the Mad Doctor himself, Cortex. Now, in Crash 1, Cortex was without a doubt the best boss in the entire game. Mainly because the others were complete jokes, but still. Cortex in Crash 2, however, is laughable with how easy it is. All you do is fly around on a jetpack avoiding rocks and mines and spin Cortex three times before he reaches the end. What sucks is that Cortex doesn't even fight back or anything. It's almost as if he's begging Crash to stop him. And the fact that this is how a fantastic game in itself ends just depresses me. In short, Crash 2's plot as a whole is just a joke. And not a funny one. Now, I'm personally not the biggest fan of Mega Man, but I totally understand the appeal. Shooting and platforming your way through many levels as a SUPER FIGHTING ROBOT is a cool concept. The most loved one, Mega Man 2, is for the most part as good as everyone says it is. That is until the boo beam trap. Who came up with this? No, seriously, who did? Because apparently this designer thought that Mega Man wasn't hard enough already, so he threw in this boss to give the middle finger to the players. This boss only has one weakness, the Crash Bomber, which has very limited ammunition, and you need to make sure that you only use it when you should, because if you screw it up and use it one too many times, you're screwed. Also, make sure to avoid the shots coming in all directions every 5 seconds so you don't die before you can kill the boss. And to top it all off, if you don't beat the boss on the first try, the ammo for the Crash Bomber will not reset. So you might as well just game over and start the whole stage all over again. I just want to let you all know that if you ever feel like a bad person sometimes, just keep in mind, someone made this. You can't nearly be as bad as the person who came up with this atrocity. Another Naughty Dog title appearing on this list, the original Uncharted for the PS3 is still to this day a well-crafted action-adventure game. Yeah, the sequels improved on the mechanics greatly, and I honestly prefer Uncharted 2, but for a first game, it still holds up really well. Such a shame that the villains suck, though. Yeah, the weakest part about the whole game is that the villains, and on top of that, the twist, suck hard. So after Navarro betrays Gabe Roman, revealing himself to be the bad guy, ooh, shocking. You finally face him off in one of the laziest boss fights I have ever seen. Not only can you not attack him right away, but he also has an insta-kill shotgun that you have to avoid in order to beat him. Once you do get him alone, all you can do is run for cover, wait until his laser sights go down, run to the next cover, and then end it off with a crappy quick time event sequence that isn't fun, is over in 30 seconds, and just makes Navarro that much more pathetic. It's a good thing that Uncharted 1 is still a fun game to play regardless, because this is easily the worst part of the game. Now, who here likes Batman? Because I sure do. In my opinion, Batman Arkham Asylum and City are the definitive games to play to truly feel like the Batman. And every Batman must have its polar opposite. The Joker. The Joker is one of the best villains in all of fiction, simply for how complex, hilarious, and downright insane he is. That's what makes him so much fun to watch. You never know what he's gonna do, but you do know that it will be psychologically traumatizing. So tell me, what is this? Oh. Oh! Oh, are you serious right now? This is the final boss to Arkham Asylum? This boss is just so pointlessly dumb that it kills the boss fight. I mean, the boss fight itself is 
fine, not the best boss in the game, but it's just fine. However, the very idea of this boss fight is such an embarrassment to both DC and the Joker. I mean, I guess it would be something that the Joker would actually do, but just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Take some notes, Hollywood. Alright, I get it. I've gone on and on about this boss fight, but I wouldn't keep talking about it for no reason. I know this is still a pretty unpopular opinion, but let me just say... The Death Egg Robot from Sonic 2 is a failure in every conceivable way. This boss fight just makes it more of a chore to finish Sonic 2. A game that, while good, has a lot of problems already. But this is just the icing on the problematic cake. I actually could tell you step by step everything wrong with it. 1. You have no rings throughout the entire fight, so one hit and you're dead. 2. Every time you fight it, you must first finish an uninteresting mini-boss beforehand, also with no rings. 3. The only way to damage the boss fight is to jump onto its chest, but the thing is that there are spikes right in front of the chest, making it near impossible to damage it normally. 4. The only way to attack the chest reliably is to wait for the Death Egg Robot to jump down, bend over, and then jump into its chest. 5. The Death Egg Robot takes 12 hits. 12 hits! And finally, if you don't know what to do, the boss fight is impossible. But if you do know what to do, then it's one of the most long and boring boss fights in the game, which isn't fun, isn't challenging, and by the time you finish it, you feel like 10 minutes have just passed. It's honestly the worst part of a pretty decent Sonic game with, for the most part, great bosses but the Death Egg Robot can disassemble itself and die in a crusher for all I care. <sighs> okay, that's enough negativity for now. So what are your least favorite boss fights in video games? Let me know in the comments. Until then, I'm the Super Gamer, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye